Now, Molly Moore is one of the better offensive rebounds, especially for his size in the entire country. They're going to come put a stop here. They want to start to get their fans dreaming about a possible surprise. Trying to draw the foul. I think that's a good call, but I love Tennessee's energy on that last defensive possession. That's the way they have to play. Richardson with the nice closeout helped force him to turnover. That's what they have to do on the defensive end of the floor. Hadn't seen it in the first 10 minutes of the game. Kara with Mason and Bowers on the bench for Auburn. Where does the offense come from? Now? Well, I mean, you've got Sean Shadid and Harrell that can both score. So I, I think. How many all SEC point guards have that on their resume? And as humble and as thoughtful as a young man that you'll find in college basketball. I quit the end when I figured out basketball in the third grade. <laughs> Ross Miller out top, seven on the shot clock for the Tigers. Look at that, certainly a state of uncertainty surrounding Tennessee basketball. I mean, what, how severe potentially are these charges and what could be the ramifications for this program and Donnie Tindall? Well, that's going to be the major question. We don't know where the NCAA, that's the big question. Uh, right now, a precedent could be set with Larry Brown at SMU. I hear that's right. <laughs> well, the Tennessee turnover. But he was getting a lot of playing time. He's going to get more if he keeps hitting his shots and playing defense like he has. So I think that's a decision John Calipari's got to make. It's like getting ready for tournament action, closing. Who's going to play? Who's going to be my key guys? Kari Johnson got a drop step on the inside, didn't get it to go. And Portis with another rebound. That is 10 for him. His 12th double double of the year, 17th of his career. Dave Neal, Darren Horn, Haley Hartung with you from Bridgestone Arena. Watkins. Up and under move off the window. Rolls. Mitch Assembly Center, which ordinarily can get very loud, but has been silenced here in the second half as the Volunteers have opened up a 15-point lead. They haven't led by this much since January 20th. 12 games ago against South Carolina, and they led by... 17 in that game. Horn. Horn's been crashing. Overs a game. That is the top number in the conference. And they score almost 20 points a game off those turnovers. Walls in the corner. Swinging around the perimeter. Walls. Off to bat. That shot was not if you wanted to go try to steal that basketball. Looked like his knee buckled on him a little bit. Durham and Watkins working the backcourt along with Harris Qualls and Kingsley on the floor for the Hogs. Balls hit the deck. Rich shoot 61%. I mean, I've given up 33% all year, number one in the nation. So right now, it's Ulysses who's played the majority of this half with Andrew Harrison, Booker, Lyles, and Carly Stein on the floor for Kentucky at the three minute mark of the half. Well, I think John Calipari is sending a message line to clear. If you play, you play well, you'll stay on the floor. There's a good offensive rebound well. by Booker. Missed the shot. And things happen. Trying to get back against the number one team, undefeated. Aaron Harrison makes brother Andrew run about 75 feet back to get that pass. Booker. Three comes. Himself or for his teammates? That won't go. It's worked to this point. Down four. Qualls pull up jumper. That won't go. Tennessee does not have a lot of depth. 
They've got just nine scholarship players. We were just talking about minutes played. Josh Richardson leads the league 36 minutes a game. Hornsby with 10 to shoot. Quarterman deep three. And a rebound. Look at that. Certainly a state of uncertainty surrounding Tennessee basketball. I mean, what? How severe potentially are these charges and what could be the ramifications for this program and Donnie Tindall? Well, that's going to be the major question. We don't know where the NCAA is. That's the big question. Uh, right now, a precedent could be set with Larry. Played pretty good early, huh? Bell out of the corner. That won't drop. Richardson the rebound. So, or for his teammates. That won't go. In Quarterman in particular, they have been the consistent scoring presence. I think the biggest key now has been to limit those live ball turnovers, and that's where Josh Gray, the man with his hands on the ball right now, has struggled at times. Quarterman sizes it up and fires it. LSU. Gray tries to set it up against the zone. If you haven't seen Tennessee play, they really are unique in that they will go zone defense for the entire ball game. It's a very aggressive matchup zone. They like to trap in the corners, trap on the post. Down, 13 apiece. That brings Thompson Bowling Arena to life. The Texas going to turn it up a notch. Holly Stein draws a crowd. Aaron Harrison got it. A huge crowd tonight considering the weather conditions in this part of the country, and they are all on their feet right now. They're fired up. Oh, right down the gut. Yeah. Really the matchup near the man. They're one team in the SEC that will stay in that zone literally the entire game. They try to match up on the ball, communicate with one another. Get it down to six on the shot clock, so they've done a good job on the opening possession. Thirteen apiece. That brings Thompson Bowling Arena to life. The Texas going to turn it up a notch. Tony Stein draws a crowd. Aaron Harrison got it. Hoffman, a young man that's fighting through some major shoulder pain. Going to have to have surgery after the season. Portis chases it down. Try to go inside. Tariko acting the paint. I, I think you got to pick your poison here. I think that the zone defense are going to keep it back a little bit and try to force LSU to shoot contested shots up over the top. They will play zone for 40 minutes as Mickey fought his shoes so he doesn't blow away. Now, and obviously making light of the fact of how thin he is, but he's a player I think that has a great skill set, and as he matures, and their hope is to put on around 18 to 20 pounds in this offseason, you'll start to see his minutes increase. They don't have size. I mean, there's high school teams across the country that have better interior size than Tennessee. But what they have done is this. they've not looked at what they don't have. They look at what they do have. They're playing for each other. They're competing for 40 minutes. And, and I really think the relationship that he's built, built with his team in year one has been very impressive. Did a tremendous job at Moorhead State and Southern Miss before coming to Knoxville. Richardson has paused on that one. Leads the league in steals. Showing the kind of fight that you want to see. At some point, the m and show has to get cranked up here in Baton Rouge. Martin and Mickey have been quiet. So is Quarterman for that matter. Nine and a half to play. It's the Volunteers trying to pull off a shocker leading by 13. And now they're running that double screen action along the baseline to try to free up Hornsby because you know, he's been their best scoring option all evening long. Beautiful Bad pass, and there's Richardson. Damn. And immediately a look at that Tennessee. Zone defense in the half court there. What's Auburn got to do against it? Well, they, they've got to not turn to these other guys. Get under your skin. Don't get into that talking game. That's what they did right there. And Bowers, Jeff, a guy that likes to jaw jack a lot. He'll bump his gums. Says it gets him into the game. 
wrong with that? Because it's not offensive. Tied at 45. 10 on the shot clock. Johnson Dean with a tough contested J. And Aaron Harrison will inbound to Collie Stein. Tennessee was absolutely embarrassed on his floor here Saturday, 47 20 at the half against LSU. Aaron Harrison for three is short. A nice block by Beard. Boy, Reese has to head back to the bench. He picked up two quick fouls in the first half, does the same here in the second half. After the under eight minute timeout in the second half, because Josh Richardson addressed the players in the huddle, he summed it up. To say that has struggled the start of his career, but really an SEC play in the last five games. He has turned it on on the offensive end of the floor. Much needed for Tennessee. His confidence level shooting the basketball. He looks like a different player shooting threes than he did earlier in the season. Former five-star recruit coming out of high school. Brings with a pass inside. Harrell battling. They know. Jeff. I was in film session yesterday, guys, and it's one of the things Donnie Tyndall said to his players. Don't let... What do you like out of this timeout? Who do you want to take the shot here? How did this uh, inbound? You know, Taj and, and or Shamshadeen and Harrell have been very good from beyond the arc. That's a quality look. Third number without a doubt. The number one guy on the Tennessee team. Good There's look. Harrison Jim. getting some pressure and almost forced a turnover. 33.8 is what teams shoot against them. That's the best in the nation. And it would be the best in the nation in a number shoot 61 percent. I mean, they're giving up 33 percent all year, number one in the nation. So right now it's Ulysses who's played the majority of this half with Andrew Harrison, Booker, Lyles, and Carly Stein on the floor for Kentucky at the three-minute mark of the half. Well, I think John Calipari is sending a message loud and clear. If you play, and play well, you'll stay on the floor. There's a good offensive rebound well. by Booker. Missed the shot. Armani Moore is one of the better offensive rebounds, especially for his size in the entire conference. They're going to come put a stop here if they want to start to get their fans dreaming about a possible surprise. Good spacing right here. Euless on the drive all the way on the baseline. Oh, oh what a nice. It's going to be awful tough to have your shoulder popping in and out and still be on the floor, yes. Dave. I don't even think we'd make it to the table for the no. game with our headsets if our shoulder no. was up. I'm laying on the sofa right about there at that, that point. <laughs> right. At times, they just struggle in some categories you think they would dominate. Points be on the trade. That's so Dean, look at this full court pressure. The one two one one press now into the front court. So Dean is playing with the because the scores, the makes allow you to do this. They allow you to set it up in a dead ball type of situation and get your guys to do this. That's create deflections and wreak some havoc. Towers cross court. Ranger trying it again. That one. Did exactly that for Tennessee basketball. He made it nationally relevant, and I think the fans were just paying uh, their respects to what he was able to do with this program. Another great, shrewd move by the athletic director at Auburn, Jay Jacobs. Inside, Bowers using that muscle a little bit off the mark. And he's continued on an upward trend since that. NCAA tournament last year. Absolutely. He's always been very good defensively, but last year in the NCAA tournament, he really took it up another level on the offensive end of the floor. How surprised are you that he's been pretty conspicuous by his silence so far in this ballgame? Well, Tennessee's locked into where he is. I mean, if there's one player from beyond the arc that you need to know where he is on the offensive end of the floor for Auburn, it's KT Harrell. He shoots over 43%. So they know where he is. Even though you're in that zone, Tennessee's done a good job. Powers using that muscle got rid you know, one of the things that Auburn needs to make sure that they do is they look for Harrell and look to get him the basketball quickly on reversal. So piece of your passing against the zone is sometimes the difference between an open shot and a contested shot. So that reversal to his side has got to be quick, just like that. There's Harrell with the open three. I'm tired. <laughs> I need to come out. 
when you're when, when you're done. I mean, that's a that's a good sign, and that's a true teammate because some guys will tell you that they're hit before the offensive play. They wait till they go, have to go back on defense, right? I mean, loose comparison in the sense of how he is an undersized power forward that's very good at rebounding. That was with Charles on Wednesday in Atlanta. And, uh, he told me he went about 295, almost three bills at all. So Bowers coaching something. I got a good Chuck Person story. I was playing out in Sacramento, and Chuck at the time was was uh, an assistant coach for the Sacramento Kings. And I popped out my shoulder just like Sean Shadeen wow. did uh, before a game. And I was shooting in the gym, getting ready for the game, trying to figure out how am I going to shoot. One of those live ball turnovers there that you mentioned that this girl can't afford to have enough development. Initially chose Tennessee over Oklahoma and Georgia Tech amongst other schools. He finish out his career on a positive note here. Tennessee looking for their 13th victory of the season again. Get... With two fouls. It doesn't help. The cost for Tennessee is an inch of their lack of depth. Booker trying to get it in. And what about Curry, man? He's scored an attic. He's my MVP right now. If you're going to put the MVP in the NBA, Mr. Curry. You know, when you think John Calipari over the years, when he was at UMass, he had Marcus Candy. When he was at Memphis, he had Derrick Rose. When he was here earlier with Kentucky, he had John Wall, then he had Anthony Davis. Doesn't have a superstar guy, but he's got a whole bunch of really good ones. Very good ones. <laughs> really, really good ones. Really, really, really good ones. <laughs> These good guys, people would love to have. Two on the shot clock. You and us have the Frovers again. That is the top number in the conference. They score almost 20 points a game off those turnovers. Walls in the corner. I think the fast breaks for Arkansas. It took four minutes and ten seconds for the Vols to get on the board. Walls elevates. No good. <laughs> Played pretty good early, huh? Bell out of the corner. That won't drop. Richardson the rebound. Portis with another rebound. That is 10 for him. His 12th double-double of the year, 17th of his career. Dave Neal, Darren Horn, Haley Hartung with you from Bridgestone Arena. Watkins. Up and under move off the window. Rolls. Or by Josh Richardson. It forced the defense to have to react and allowed Hubs to turn the corner and be able to finish. Three ball blocked. Showing the kind of fight that you want to see. At some point, the m and show has to get cranked up here in Baton Rouge. Martin and Mickey have been quiet. So is Quarterman, for that matter. Nine and a half to play. It's the Volunteers trying to pull off a shocker, leading by 13. And now they're running that double screen action along the baseline to try to free up Hornsby because you know, he's been their best scoring option all evening long. Beautiful. Bad pass, and there's Richardson. Rich Assembly Center, which ordinarily can get very loud, but has been silenced here in the second half as the Volunteers have opened up a 15-point lead. They haven't led by this much since January 20th, 12 games ago against South Carolina, and they led by 17 in that game. Hornsby, Hornsby crashing. Maybe six was terrific. And Mercer and Walker and Derek Anderson, McCarty, Delk. Speaking of Greenberg, this is the biggest lead set right now for Tennessee. And John Calipari took out Andrew Harrison because he wasn't being aggressive enough. Said he was playing too soft, he wasn't attacking. So, still, Kentucky with a seven point lead. And that size inside, like they were getting early in the first half. And they're trying to match up. Towns got to slide inside. Slide inside and walk the ball down in the post. Oh, what was that? for the steal. And that leaves an open shot on the baseline. Paulie Stein got the offense on the floor at the Kari Johnson, Willie Pauly Stein, Booker, Tyler Ulis, and the guy that's running the show right now is Andrew Harrison at the point. Spread the floor, looking for high percentage shots right here. His total command. Harrison. Five. With his fifth rebound up to Watkins. You watch 
Coach Watkins, who actually played on an AAU team with Bobby Portis and Moses Kingsley. They won the AAU National Championship together. <laughs> that must have been some basketball team. It's a strong AAU squad. <laughs> yeah. Not a good offensive possession for Arkansas Ball State on the perimeter. different guy each side. They had eight different leading scores. That's who they are. I tell you one thing. I think a lot of guys like to coach great players, though. I'd like to have those great players and have that chance. You know, Jack, coach, you coached great players at one time in your life. That's a long time ago. I did. I did. Andrew Harrison had a three rim out. There it is. Back 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 line. How many all SEC point guards have that on their resume? And as humble and as thoughtful as a young man that you'll find in college basketball. I quit the end when I figured out basketball in the third grade. <laughs> and Ross Miller out top. Seven on the shot clock for the Tigers. <laughs> Played pretty good early, huh? Bell out of the corner. That won't drop. Richardson the rebound out of the Big East. And then just run out of gas really here down the stretch in large part because of some roster challenges. Stands 48 44, less than nine to go. And a little tandem there, a little double post between the two big guys. And a double up, get the ball out of his hands. By Josh Richardson, tremendous effort. Mike Anderson looking for his first tournament victory as the head coach of the Razorbacks. They have lost seven straight tournament games as Arkansas. The ice and snow that we received here in the southeast. A lot of our crew, it took them two days to get here. So we're all happy to be here, and we hope you're nice and warm someplace. Watching Kentucky and Tennessee with us. Well, Tennessee have utilized that matchup zone. They have to play that matchup zone. They don't have enough size, really, to match up man to man. They're one team in the SEC that will stay in that zone literally the entire game. They try to match up on the ball, communicate they with one another. Get it down to six on the shot clock, so they've done a good job on the opening possession. Hit with two fouls. It doesn't help the cause for Tennessee. As I mentioned, their lack of depth. Booker trying to get it out here. That's right. <laughs> what a Tennessee turnover. But he was getting a lot of play in time. He's going to get more if he keeps hitting his shots and playing defense like he has. So I think that's a decision John Calipari's got to make. It's like getting ready for tournament action. Close in. Who's going to play? Who's going to be my key guys? Gary Johnson got a drop step on the inside. Didn't get it to go. And overs again. That is the top number in the conference. And they score almost 20 points a game off those turnovers. Walls in the corner. Balkman, a young man that's fighting through some major shoulder pain. Gonna have to have surgery after the season. Portis chases it down. Trying to go inside, Tariko. Kingsley with that rebound. Beard will get it off to Watkins. Kingsley had his hands on it. Be worse than 10 had they not got aggressive and got to the free throw line. Portis fall away. That won't go. With his fifth rebound up to Watkins. Watkins, who actually played on an AAU team with Bobby Portis 
and Moses Kingsley. They won the AAU National Championship together. <laughs> that must have been some basketball team. The strong AAU squad. <laughs> yeah. Not a good offensive possession for Arkansas. Ball stayed on the perimeter. Look at that. If you wanted to go try to steal that basketball, it looked like his knee buckled on him a little bit. Durham and Watkins working the backcourt along with Harris Qualls and Kingsley on the floor for the Hawks. Qualls hit the deck. Portis with another rebound. That is 10 for him. His 12th double double of the year, 17th of his career. Big deal. Darren Horn, Haley Hartung with you from Bridgestone Arena. Watkins. Up and under move off the window. Roll himself or for his teammates. That won't go. This opportunity is at point blank range as the reason they couldn't pull it off. Harris tried to dunk. Missing huddle more from Donnie Tindall driving the basketball and not letting Arkansas score. It's worked to this point. Down four. Walls pull up jumper that won't go. Tennessee playing with four four players with four fouls. Hunter Richardson Reese are on the floor with four. Shot clock at seven his shoes so he doesn't blow away now that's obviously making light of the fact of how thin he is but he's a player I think that has a great skill set and as he matures and their hope is to put on around 18 to 20 pounds in this offseason you'll start to see his minutes increase Tennessee does not have a lot of depth they've got just nine scholarship players we were just talking about minutes played Josh Richardson leads the league 36 minutes a game Hornsby with 10 to shoot. Quarterman deep three. And a rebound. Floor by Josh Richardson. It forced the defense to have to react and allowed Hubs to turn the corner and be able to finish. Three ball blocked. And you got a little bit of a mismatch more, so much stronger physically than Hornsby to find the shooter across the key. And we welcome those of you to Baton. We don't have size. I mean, there's high school teams across the country <laughs> that have better interior size than Tennessee. But what they have done is this, they've not looked at what they don't have. They look at what they do have. They're playing for each other. They're competing for 40 minutes. And, and I really think the relationship that he's built, built with his team in year one has been very impressive. Did a tremendous job at Moorhead State and Southern Miss before coming to Knoxville. Richardson has paused on that one. Leads the league in steals. LSU. Ray tries to set it up against the zone. If you haven't seen Tennessee play, they really are unique in that they will go zone defense for the entire ball game. It's a very aggressive matchup zone. They like to trap in the corners, trap on the post. Really limited numbers for Owens at the offensive end of the floor. He's already got four in this game. Martin. Can't get it. Five and a half to play. Two point lead. Quarterman lost it. Richard. You move the ball and you don't dribble it and you play team basketball and you, you put yourself in a great situation. That's what Tennessee's done all night long. They just moved the ball. They're whipping it around the floor right now, finding the open man. How do you dissect this zone right now if you're LSU? 
very similar to how we showed you in the fast analysis. They have to get the ball inside. This whole possession, the ball has stayed outside the three-point line. It continues to stay there with six on the shot clock. And now a desperation three. Not doing the kind of fight that you want to see. At some point, the m and show has to get cranked up here in Baton Rouge. Martin and Mickey have been quiet. So is Quarterman, for that matter. Nine and a half to play. It's the Volunteers trying to pull off a shocker, leading by 13. And now they're running that double screen action along the baseline to try to free up Hornsby because you know, he's been their best scoring option all evening long. Beautiful that pass, and there's Richardson. Rich Assembly Center, which ordinarily can get very loud, but has been silenced here in the second half as the Volunteers have opened up a 15-point lead. They haven't led by this much since January 20th, 12 games ago against South Carolina, and they led by 17 in that game. Hornsby, Hornsby crashing, looting. And immediately a look at that Tennessee zone defense in the half court there. What's Auburn got to do against it? Well, they, they've got to not turn. And they're running. <laughs> Mason in that zone they swing it around to Shams Dean. Auburn with a two-point lead. Canada kicks it out. Mason thought about it. And Canada with the floater halfway down and out. Auburn hitting the glass. How surprised are you that he's been pretty conspicuous by his silence so far in this ball game? Well, Tennessee's locked into where he is. I mean, if there's one player from beyond the arc that you need to know where he is on the offensive end of the floor for Auburn, it's KT Harrell. He shoots over 43%. So they know where he is, even though you're in that zone. Tennessee's done a good job. Powers using that muscle. Got rid of him. Line. Some of these other guys get under your skin. Don't get into that talking game. That's what they did right there. And Bowers, Jeff, a guy that likes to jaw jack a lot. He'll bump his gums. Says it gets him into the game. Nothing wrong with that. It's not offensive. Tied at 45. 10 on the shot clock. Johnson Dean with a tough contested chance. Canada back out to Mason. Powers battling underneath. Back out. 13 apiece. That brings Thompson Bowling Arena to life. The Tigers going to turn it up a notch. Holly Stein draws a crowd. Aaron Harrison got it. A huge crowd tonight considering the weather conditions in this part of the country, and they are all on their feet right now. They're fired up. Oh, right down the gut. Yeah. Not a real deep beach uh, bench for Donnie Tindall. The starts don't get much better than that. The perfect shooting from the field so far for Arkansas. Balls. Catch, shoot. Harris tied up by Richardson and Hubs gets out of that trouble. Now Qualls in the corner. Nice ball movement. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at, at what Bruce Pearl has been able to do at each of his stops, and it's Create an energy, create a buzz. I mean, and that's what he does. He gets his guys to play so incredibly hard. Nice season long. I mentioned earlier, Armani Moore benches 185 17 times. I don't know if Owens can get that up once, but he had a strong dunk there. It'd be, it'd be more than his body weight. <laughs> LSU. Nice pass by Quarterman and then a small forward. Get out on the perimeter, drive past, use his shoulders, create an angle. What a game for him and Richardson. You look at your upperclassmen in the lead, and they've done so tonight. Look at that. Certainly a state of uncertainty surrounding Tennessee basketball. I mean, what?
how severe potentially are these charges and what could be the ramifications for this program and Donnie Tindall? Well, that's going to be the major question. We don't know where the NCAA. That's the big question. Uh, right now, a precedent could be set with Larry. They're going in the locker room psychologically in Tennessee. They don't need down six to seven. You want to be able to go in there and feel it. Uh oh, that's dangerous. Booker missed the three, doesn't miss too many. Got his own rebound. And. Booker wide open. Can't leave him alone like that. Bud Walton Arena, but they couldn't win on the road, and uh, they've proven that to be not the case this year. So there's a chance, maybe. We're under four minutes, and it's Kentucky by 12. Tell you, everybody been talking this team, that team. All I know is they're going to have a great chance leaving here 26 and zip. I would say there's a 100% chance. By Josh Richardson, tremendous effort. Mike Anderson looking for his first tournament victory as the head coach of the Razorbacks. They have lost seven straight tournament games as Arkansas. It's going to be awful tough to have your shoulder popping in and out and still be on the floor, Dave. I don't even think we'd make it to the table for the yeah. game with our headsets if our shoulder yeah. was up. I'm laying on the sofa right about there at that, that point. <laughs> right. At times, they just struggle in some categories you think they would dominate. Hornsby on the trade. That sign for Tennessee, Kevin Punter. He's become a nice drop into the Josh Richardson Batman for the ball offense. Mason kicks it back out top. Jumps at Dean now. But Tennessee's pressure comes from their perimeter with their length. They don't have a ton of size inside. They don't have a shot blocking presence in the back line of that zone. But watch how Hunter and Richardson really work and make it tough for you out top. They hit that foul line area. That open shoulder injuries to both. Yeah, he limited. I mean, he, he hurt it against Texas a and the last time out. So when you've got that shoulder injury to both, I mean, particularly your shooting shoulder, it, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's really tough to, to be able to shoot the basketball and make plays. Drives it in, though, fearlessly gets it to go off glass. Mason up court for Auburn and, pardon me, Harrell. And that player that has struggled the start of his career, but really an SEC play in the last five games. He has turned it on on the offensive end of the floor. Much needed for Tennessee. His confidence level shooting the basketball. He looks like a different player shooting threes than he did earlier in the season. Former five-star recruit coming out of high school. Brings with the pass inside. Harrell battling. They know